Good morning, good morning. Welcome to a big full moon day. How are you all doing? Take a nice clearing breath as we become familiar with the space that we're in. Good morning, Marilyn, welcome. We've got a big full moon today. We're stepping into working with the emotional part of the body. And sort of the second chakra, the water zone of the body, known as sort of the water, represents the water element. So we're going to take a small, we're gonna dip our toes today because the full moon can bring um, a lot of energies uh, uh, that come up for us. And that's because it, the moon um, has a pull, a push and a pull. Uh, living on the West Coast in the Pacific Ocean, we know firsthand um, the, 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 the effect that the moon has on our ocean. And it's massive, vast space. So when we're 70 to 80% water, can you imagine? Just imagine for a moment the draw that it has on the fluids within our body. Either an expansion or a contraction, a push or a pull. So on the full moon, we sort of look at the full moon as an opportunity to let go. It stirs up something that comes up for us. We might feel a little frustrated. Oh, there goes my throat. <clears> throat> it's just the throat chakra, that's okay. We're talking into tender, tender areas. And sometimes when you find yourself losing your voice, it's because perhaps there's still something um, ruminating in there. Oh yes, let's let it go. Who knows what it could be? Our subconscious is 95% of us. Our conscious mind is only 5% of us. So these little indicators, these little nuances that we see within ourselves and experience and become aware of within ourselves are areas that we can step into with our breath with our awareness, with our witness consciousness, where we are looking at the events as opposed to being in the events. Sort of like in that hamster wheel or in that washing machine. It'd be much nicer to say, wow, there's me, I'm in that washing machine. What do I need to do right now to get out of there? What would serve me the best? And that's when we can say, you know, I'm just gonna take a minute. I don't think this is the best time to be having this conversation. I feel a little crazy. Transparency, vulnerability, rawness, is, it's all works. It's all part of our process. So I'd like you to think about, um, I'd like you to think about a vortex. So basically our body is a vortex of energy. It goes up and it comes down and it goes out. And so we have this toroidal force, this energy system. But I'd like you to think we're gonna talk about emotions right now. And I'd like to talk to you um, with regards to, um, it has a scale of emotions. And in this scale is a vortex. So, um, and we can either be going up the vortex, evolution, or we can be in involution, coming down the vortex. And that might be a bit much, so you don't even need to, to know what those words are. It's just a matter of rungs. And um, so we can take a look at sort of the first level of emotions being uh, contentment. You know, when we take a look of the people around us, see, there's some people that are just in some contentment. What is, is, is a common phrase. Um, and we can then look at the next level where uh, there's hope. There's some sort of a, um, there's something a little bit more than contentment because there's this, this, this hope, um, which reminds me, Deepak Chopra, I love him dearly. I've been listening to his 21 day meditations. Um, I take on meditations whenever I can. And when I have wonderful resources like Deepak's, I take his on too. So he's got a 21 day meditation right now. Uh, all on hope. Uh, it just started, I listened to day two last night. Um, Sometimes I just allow him to, his voice just um, 
drifts me off to sleep. And when we go to sleep, we're in this theta brainwave. So we're downloading. So I'm like, okay, I know that I'm safe to be downloading Deepak's information as I drift off into theta and my dream state. Um, but anyway, so the second, um, we go from contentment to hopefulness. And from hopefulness, um, we get, it helps to um, strengthen our, our container of safety. You see, and we want to always maintain our container of safety. So it, even when I work with clients and they come in and they're a place of hopelessness, uh, the opposite of hopefulness, um, we work for, to find that little threat, that little spark, that that little piece of hope and, and um, optimism and opportunity. And that is the next one after hopefulness is optimism. So we, that becomes part of the journey of the healing. So if you can uh, relate to any of these, um, put yourself, where, where are you? And then follow yourself as we, we go up these rungs. And then from optimism, then we become, then we start to get some evidence, you know, um, and we then become um, uh, more belief oriented because we have these, this evidence. And that's where I work with the psych K, with the subconscious and working with the limiting beliefs and being able to muscle test, the kinesiology form of muscle testing um, to, to um, say, I, you know, I wanna live. No, oh gosh, well, let's get to work on that and become whole brained because there's a distress. There's a stressor on the nervous system and says so I don't wanna live. Um, and we can work with cross patterning and uh, to bring the brain back to whole brained and then we can muscle test again and I wanna live. Okay, well, that's a great place to start. <laughs> so then we become uh, more in, uh, into positive expectations. Now, um, with beliefs. So now with expectations, I always, have a little caveat because when when we have an expectation that's where we can experience some disappointment so we need to be prepared to be able to to say that that expectation may not come to the reality at this time and we need to be have the facilities to be able to uh, work with disappointment and uh, in a way that's healthy for our nervous system instead of beating ourselves up uh, and then we, with that positive expectation and that belief, then we, we get enthusiasm. So I, you know, I think about my buildup to trying to get on here every single day. It's like, okay, I have these beliefs and these expectations. No, Deborah, don't go there because you know what? No one might show up. One person might show up. A whole bunch might show up, but just drop that. That's wherever your um, thoughts and awareness goes, that's where your energy goes. So is that the best place and use of my energy? From enthusiasm, we get into passion, uh, which is um, you know a bit uh, my and this is all my opinion. Um, <clears throat> uh, we get a little bit more drive, or I always say that's where the why is bigger than the fear, and uh, I think that's what came down to on my birthday was it was more important that I was here than any fear that I could have had. Um, and thank you for those that direct message me um, with your comments because they keep um, me going as well. And I'm, I'm truly humbled by, uh, by your words uh, of love and uh, the feedback that you're giving me. So thank you. And then um, the, the top of the spiral is where we get to joy. Um, and with joy, we get knowledge and empowerment and freedom and love and appreciation and my favorite word, bliss, and how bliss is shows up for you and, and what bliss is for you because like I said it's different for each and every one of us. It has an underlying current, it has underlying frequency, but it also has an individual expression. So that is sort of the, um, the uh, beginnings of sort of the evolution of, of our emotions and then when we look sort of at the, the downward um, Spiral, and I don't mean downward as in, um, well, it is, it is a little bit downward because it's going to basically go from, um, uh, we've got uh, boredom, you know, and uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be in boredom right now. So to be aware of that, uh, frustration, irritation, impatience, oh, heck yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Um, we've got pessimism and overwhelm and 
We've got doubt and disappointment and worry, and blame, and discouragement and anger, uh, revenge, hatred and rage, jealousy, insecurity, guilt, unworthiness, fear, grief, depression, powerlessness, and victim. So that's what we're often up against. And to become aware of where you are at in that spiral. Because that is where I would like to invite you to do the work today with this beautiful full moon. I'd love for you to take scraps of paper and write down everything that you are willing to let go of today. Any pessimism, any grief, any fear, any powerlessness thoughts. Write them down. And I would suggest getting a nice big pot or going outside and burning them. And if burning doesn't work for you and you've got a shredder, then shred them. And if shredding doesn't work for you, then just rip them up into little bits and know that they're done. The whole idea is don't keep them. Don't keep them to read again and find out how far you've come. Just let them go. Write everything down. What are you bored about? I'm tired of sitting on the couch. Burn it. Don't burn the couch. Burn that little piece of paper. <laughs> Frustrations, irritations, impatience. And this is available to you anytime. Not just this time. Every full moon, I do a burning ceremony because I have the um, gift of having a wood stove fireplace in the interior of my home that I deeply, deeply love and enjoy. And I have a little fire pit outside um, that I deeply enjoy. Um, I'm a fire sign. So I guess fire is my transmutation, my form of transmutation, and that's what we're doing. We're transmuting that energy into the good energy. So after you've done a little letting go or big letting go ceremony with this beautiful moon, full moon, I also invite you to take another little or big piece of paper and jot down what you want. Yesterday's card was focus on your vision. So it's focus on our vision. Because one thing that we know for sure is that we're not going to be the same person that we are at the end of this pandemic. We're not going to be the same person that we are at the end of this series of um, Facebook Lives. It's, it's not possible. Wherever we have that live bliss where we're educating ourselves and taking just little snippets of what worked with for us and letting go of whatever that does not work for us, we're evolving. We're changing. We're part of the evolution up but we've got to work with all the involution the involution is not bad it's an awareness of what we need to work on in order to evolve it involves clearing and working and growing through all these sort of spirals this way and it allows this it's the balance it's the contrast it's the expansion and the contraction so when we're on the evolution side, it gives us a greater awareness to look over and witness the involution side from this side so we don't get in that washing machine or that hamster wheel. We have that, like the monks would say when they meditate, they sit on the top of the mountain, they have a broader view. It gives us that broader view. It allows us to be more gentle on ourselves. Every time, even this morning, scrambling to, to eight, you know, get eight, 845 and it's like, I don't need to scramble. I don't need to scramble. I just need to show up just as I am. I might be, you know, a little frustrated today or I'm, I might be worried. You know, what are people thinking? Haven't heard from a single friend. I have no idea. 
<laughs> that's not true. I have. They're, they're lovingly supporting me, and so is my family. So let's work with that today. Let's work with um, the downward side of the spiral, but work from it on the upward spiral side. Work from it with enthusiasm. Work with it from a positive expectation for change and self-healing. Work from it with the place of optimism. Even if, if hope's all you got, let's work with it from hope. And if you're working it with it from contentment, so be it. It's all good. So let's feel our feet on the floor. Mm, I forgot to introduce myself again. <laughs> I will now. Deborah O'Neill from blissby.me, whole Integrative Holistic Health, coming to you live from Vancouver, BC. That's Metro Vancouver, city of Coquitlam. Certified practitioner in advanced integrative energy healing. Himalayan meditation yoga teacher studies initiate. Certified sound healing therapeutics, working with the Healing Well Collective Professional Series, all these beautiful things that I've invited into my life. And most importantly, Psych K, working with the limiting beliefs. And then inviting in that full moon energy to be with us and allow us that greater awareness giving the body permission to work with the energy of the full moon and I think the universe is leaning into our strengths when we follow the rhythms of the universe it also affects our rhythms of our bodies so the more that we know or the more that we chose choose to <coughs> um, embrace it adds to the strength of our beingness our wholeness our whole beingness physical, mental, emotional, and relational. Let's drop into the center of the earth. Allow the body to feel, make, create that etheric line, those roots coming out of the feet, right down to that central core. Ground. Allowing that beautiful earth energy coming in from up from the central core of the earth, up in through the bottom of the feet, into the full leg into the full abdomen, into the heart, allow the heart to expand. It's our greatest energy vortex within our body. Allowing that earth energy to come over the shoulders and allow it to melt the weight of the world off each and every time and down to your arms and to your hands, up through the neck through the head, out the crown, and down the body. Allow the body just to wave, uh, rock a little bit and find the center. <clears throat> Bring that center in line from the bottom of the earth, up through the spine, up through the head, into the sky, past the stars, into our solar, solar, solar and, and um, Milky Ways and galaxies and cosmos. Fine line to divine, source, creator, higher self. Allow that gold and white energy to come in into the crown. You can give your top of your crown a little tap down into the crown, into the head. This healing golden white light of energy touching every cell and every space in between each cell. Hi, Chetna. Thank you. Into the neck, into the shoulders, down the arms, to the hands, through the heart. Allow the heart and the lungs and the earth energy to blend. Allow that red and that gold and that white, if you see the colors, blending in your heart and allow it to open. Allow the golden white light to come through the torso and the hips, down the legs and into the feet. Let's take a moment with these two energies and feel the rhythm in the body. Experience the body with, and these energies with all your senses. Did your mouth just become dry? I don't know why, but I'm just following my own and sharing my own with you as, as I receive as well. Yeah. 
And since my head is warm from the beautiful golden white light energy, and my toes are cold because I feel like they're still so deeply implanted in the earth that they're a little chilly. Do you have a tingle? Now allow the mantra to come in so hum. I invite you to, on the so, on the inhalation, allow the belly to expand. Gentle, smooth breath. And on the hum, natural exhalation where the abdomen is, is coming in towards the spine. Nothing forced. One smooth breath. So, exhaling hum. A hand placement that is an option is to take the left hand, an open hand, and put it in your lap. Take your right hand and lay it on top of the left hand. And allow your thumbs to connect. Just gently. It's thought that when we lose our concentration on the mantra, our thumbs will come apart. And the mantra allows us to form our concentration, which was one of our action steps. How did that go? Concentrating on the person that's closest to you in your life fully, 100%, freaking them out a little bit, I'm sure. A reminder for the four-pointed four breath, full complete yogic breath. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Close with the namaste and the bells. Offering an offering for the day. I invite you to like and share if the replays are available. You're welcome to leave your name and email on our website www.thisbe.me if you'd like receive blog posts with a recap of the videos and some structure. And you'll also be notified when the portal goes live. I thank you for sitting with me today. I love you. think of you as you enter into a letting go ceremony as well and you can journal it just allow the hand to free write all the things that you wish to let go of
release it, surrender it. Surrender it to the darkness of the moon. offering today from the wild card is spend more time to experience nature. Mm. It's so beautiful. Ne nature is our true healer. If you're not comfortable going outside, sit by the window. If you can, open it up. And just pay attention. Become aware. If you're not close to anything, find a stone. Imagine how old that stone might be where that stone's been. Sometimes I think like my garden is a stone garden. I take so many stones out of my garden and they keep coming, they keep coming. It's impossible, I've lived here for 28 years. There should be no stones left, they keep coming. I live on a mountain, Eagle Mountain. We're very blessed. And I feel very blessed that you're here joining me. for being here with me today. Let go. Let go that all of that stuff that isn't serving you. I'll be writing today and letting go of mine. Let's do it together. I'll hold space for you. And then remember to write down what you truly want. And burn that too, but burn that with the surrender that you know that the universe has got you back. Let's play into our strengths and lean into our strengths. Let's walk in love, love for the earth, love for all. We're feeding the collective energy. We're flattening the curve of not only the virus, but we're flattening the curve of our sympathetic nervous system into our parasympathetic nervous system. So so much joy to you. Make it a great day.